Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for the opportunity to make this presentation to you here today. The Adv Advocate Scheme is intended to keep ladder users and those responsible for supervising ladder users informed and up to date on all aspects of ladder safety and best practice. As a ladder advocate, I also plan to dispel some of the myths and misconceptions surrounding ladders following the introduction of the working at height regulations. My name is Mike Law. I'm sales director with Abru, one of the largest ladder manufacturers in the UK. And I'm here today to represent the Ladder Association, who was founded in 1947 and who covers all aspects of ladder manufacturer to all suppliers, hirers, trainers, and the association is the only body dedicated to the ladder user. Ladder advocates, like myself, uh, are long-standing members of the Ladder Association, and I personally sit as chairman of the Ladder Association Training Committee. Our message is very simple. If it's the right ladder to use, oh, sorry, if it's right to use a ladder, use the right ladder. But get trained to use it properly. Who are we? The association fulfills a number of roles through its various, various committees, principal of which are the a technical committee, the ladder training committee, and the executive council committee. It is perceived as being the logical and natural focus for everything connected with ladders, of which we believe there are some two million in everyday use in the UK and Ireland alone. The association also manages and delivers what is now recognized as being the industry standard training scheme. So what do we do? We fulfill a number of roles out there in the industry. The association promotes and champions the ladder as an invaluable piece of access uh, of workplace equipment. It does, through, it does so through seminars, conferences, exhibitions such as this, together with articles in the trade press and so on. Its safety rate related publications, products and website covers all aspects of ladders and step ladders. The association's training courses deliver confidence and competence as required by the regulations. Specialist committees contribute to the setting of both national and international standards. And as a member of the Access Industry Forum, the association is committed to advancing ladder knowledge, safety and skills. A little bit of fact and fiction. We believe ladders are indispensable. And contrary to what you might read in the popular press, ladders are not banned. Jeffrey Podger, the chief executive of the HSC, said, let me be clear, ladders are not banned. And he has been saying that continually since 2005, when the work at height regulations were first introduced. And with some, some two million ladders in daily use, they remain a dis dispensable, indispensable in the workplace. They are used in every industry sector to provide quick, simple, safe means of access for a variety of tasks. And for straightforward, short duration work, they still remain the sensible option. A little bit more fact and fiction. Jacob didn't ascend to heaven using a scissor lift. Your kids don't play snakes and podiums, and you don't climb the mup of success. You use a ladder. Now, the, what's the acid test for ladder, or for use of the ladders? Obviously, it's always subject to risk assessment. The use of the ladder is determined if it is low risk and short duration. Now, how do you define short duration? What, we not, what I normally do when I'm giving, this course, uh, giving a training course is I ask the delegates to answer this, and there's lots of different answers come out of that, but how we've determined it is it's 30 minutes or less. 
or a series of tasks that take 30 minutes or less is quite allowable. However, if you believe that you're going to be working for a longer time, more than 30 minutes in any one situation, then the ladder is probably not the right piece of kit for you. There are alternatives. But when the ladder is obviously the right task for the job, why use some of these alternatives when they can take more time? And in many cases, they actually generate more risk. In certain instances, they can do more harm to the environment. And you certainly, in many cases, spend more money using some of these alternatives. This is something that's been recently well documented in the news, where one council has paid an extra £1 million in 12 months in to, to actually access areas which probably could have been done from ladders with the correct, uh, with the correct risk assessment. Now, that £1 million extra is going to cost a lot of jobs in the current, in the current end climate. So what the regulations say is you must ensure that everyone involved in work is competent or, if being trained, is supervised by a competent person. This includes involvement in organization, planning, supervision, and the supply and maintenance of, of equipment. The regulations also say where other precautions do not entirely eliminate the risk of fall or a fall occurring, you must, as far as reasonably practical to do so, train those who will be working at height on how to avoid falling or how to avoid or minimize injury to themselves should they fall. The regulations set out a simple hierarchy for managing and selecting equipment for work at height. Duty holders must avoid work at height where they can and use work equipment or other measures to prevent falls where they cannot avoid working at height or where they cannot eliminate the risk of a fall, use work equipment other or other measures to minimize the distance and consequences of fall once they, should they occur. The key to working at height is competency. So what is competency? Well, everybody in training knows it's a mixture of knowledge, experience, and training. Knowledge and experience are very, very difficult things to quantify. However, proof of training can easily, can easily be demonstrated. In the case of the Ladder Association, a training certificate and ladder card are issued. Failing to demonstrate competency is a breach of regulations and could lead to prosecution. With the introduction of the Health and Safety Offences Act 2008 in January 2009 and the widely publicized court case where the school caretaker successfully sued a local council authority for the lack of formal ladder training, the imperative for professional training has never been greater. The Ladder Association training gives the key to competency. It tells you when to use ladders and step ladders, how to identify ladders and minimize the risk, and how to position and use them safely. It also adds a, a, a section on how to inspect and maintain these products correctly. Users and inspection courses are available and both, course, both courses are delivered by approved training centers who must be members of the association. These training centers are regularly audited to ensure their continuing compliance with the high standards involved and delegates, delegates are assured of consistent and uniform training based on an agreed syllabus. Both courses are available nationally and last approximately six hours. They both involve a theory and practical tests, and upon successful completion, delegates receive a certificate and ladder association training card. This card says the bearer has completed the ladder association theory, theory and practical test and is considered competent in the training categories at the level specified 
and has been awarded the Ladder Association Training Competence Certificate. Both the Ladder Training Certificate and card are both, cert uh, both certified and valid for five years. Everyone who goes on a Ladder Association training course comes away admitting they have benefited in some way from attending. Even if it is only to say that the course has reminded them and reinforced them of the basics. They feel more competent as a result and therefore safer. The Ladder Association has a number of case studies that underpins this point that and they are available on the Ladder Association website. They were produced as part of the association's Don't Be a Ladder Lightweight campaign, a campaign aimed at long-time ladder users to encourage the safe and professional use of ladders and step ladders. In other words, don't be a na naive amateur. There are 10 things that you need to know in ladders, ladders remain an invaluable piece of workplace equipment. Decide if it's the right, right to use a ladder by risk assessment. Use one of the right classification of ladders. They need to be for tasks of low risk and short duration. How do we define short duration? Again, it's 30 minutes. If the task is longer than 30 minutes for a single task, you should look at other ways of, of uh, actually completing that task. Always take the, take the right measures. Plan ahead, that's extremely important. And make sure that the people are using the ladders in your businesses and so on are competent. And you can use that ladder card to demonstrate, demonstrate, demonstrate that competence. We now have a new resource in the, uh, in the uh, Ladder Association, which is called Ladder Solve. This is a new information resource, and it looks at the myths and misconceptions, ladders and ladder facts, do's and don'ts, and something called STEP, which is a method methodology used in our training courses, which takes people through the way that they decide how to use the right piece of ladder equipment. This is all part of the ladder training, and we also have a questions and queries section in this ladder solve area for people to access uh, through the website. The, uh, the Ladder Advocate Scheme also uh, uh, provides other resources. We have, it's, it's recognized as the Bible of the industries and covers employers' and users' responsibilities the work at height regulations, risk avoidance, ladder standards and classifications, the safe use of ladders and step ladders, the importance of planning ahead, inspecting taking care of ladders, and this is available from the association website. In those resources, we have Working the Safe Way, which is a simple page showing on the website how to use ladders and step ladders the correct way, just covering the basic bullet points. This is different for step ladders and for extension ladders, so you will find different sheets on both of them. We also have the ladder book, which basically covers um, all the general sort of aspects of working at height for ladder products. It's a free handy sized product, product guide covering those ladder essentials. It's purpose designed aids to help users comply with the regu regulation. We can also provide free posters to be used in your workplace to make sure that people are working to the the safe, uh, the safe ways we've put into our training uh, initiatives. Other annual initiatives that we've used is one called the Ladder Exchange. This has been devised working with the HSE, and it was actually put together to try and get ladders out of the industry 
that were, let's say the least, dodgy. And over a period of time, over the period of the past few years, we have taken out 8,000 ladders out of the marketplace. 1,024 ladders were exchanged in the most recent campaign. And what we've been trying to do over a period of time is get more and more members into the scheme out there, the big sellers of ladders, so we can actually get more ladders out of the system that are unsafe to use. We look at trends of developments in product design. We work closely with these people who devise the standards so we can give information on that. And we're constantly updating our safety and best practice. So our message is very, very simple. As I said before, if it's right to use a ladder, use the right ladder. But please get trained to use it properly and safely. The Ladder Association work very, very closely with the AAF, as do all the other uh, people that you've seen here speaking with you today. Thank you for that. Have we any questions?